Hi, I'm Debbie Nelson with Mixing Publishing, and we've been doing a series of videos about graphene. So I would like to welcome our Editor-in-Chief, Adrian Nixon from England. I am here from the United States. Welcome, Adrian. Afternoon, Debbie. How are you? Oh, good morning. Yeah, it's, it's a six-hour time difference, so it's uh, always wonderful to meet with you. We've got a topic today that um, might just be a surprise to some people. So we're going to talk about quantum dots and how in the world they relate to graphene and cannabis. Ah, yes. There is a very good connection, a strong connection. Um, but first of all, I'll need to tell you all about quantum dots. Then I'll need to tell you about graphene quantum dots, and then we'll take a look at the connection with cannabis. So for that, I need to share my screen again. Uh, are you okay with that? Sounds good, because I have no idea about quantum dots. <laughs> <laughs> right. We've got a white screen as usual again, and I'll just minimize our video so uh, the viewers can see everything. So what are quantum dots? Um, basically, they are very tiny nanoscale things. Uh, which are made of zinc, lead, cadmium, things like that. They're very small particles. And when you shine ultraviolet light on them, they glow, but they can glow with different colors. So uh, you can, uh, you know, when you go into a disco or something like that, your shirt can glow and your clothes can grow, glow different colors under the UV light. Have you seen that? Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's that sort of phenomenon. Uh, it's called uh, fluorescence. And... Um, Basically what's happening is the, the material is taking in the ultraviolet light that we can't see and then the material absorbs it and then re-emits the light um, in a wavelength that we can see and that's why we see the different colours. All the different colours are just different wavelengths of light and different materials will re-emit the UV light in different colours. That's fine and dandy. The thing about quantum dots, though, is that uh, they're used all over the place for display screens, they're used in mobile phones, um, you call them cell phones, I think, don't you? Um, they use it for all sorts of applications, but uh, a lot of them contain heavy metals like lead and cadmium, which are not quite desirable because they're quite toxic in the environment. So um, right. recently, over the last few years, it's been discovered that uh, graphene can also make quantum dots. Now, I'll just stop sharing for a second because um, I can show you my screen again. So rather than show you how the PowerPoint works, then we just look at, remember my molecular models, okay. uh, graphene again. What happens is um, graphene is this hexagonal lattice of carbon. And when it's on a large scale and ultraviolet light shines on it, then nothing else happens really, it just sits there. But if you cut the sheet down to very small areas, so smaller than 100 nanometers, uh, then once you get below that size, something called quantum confinement comes in, which would probably take too long to explain now. Let's just say that um, when ultraviolet light comes down, there are um, energy levels inside the uh, orbitals of graphene, the molecular orbitals, and the energy causes electrons to get promoted up to levels and it absorbs the UV light and then the, uh, you get a relaxation where the uh, electrons then hop back down again and when they come back down the, they absorb light to go back in and so when they hop back down again they emit light um, when they rest back down to the ground state and the, the size of that step that they hop back down determines the colour of the light that they emit. Does that sort of make sense? Really? That's interesting. And it's right. only on small pieces, the much, the much, much smaller scale. Yeah, that, 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 that mechanism tends to happen when the size of the graphene piece is smaller than 100 nanometers. Okay. And 100 nanometers is very, very, very small. So you'd be familiar with a, milli a, a meter. A millimeter is a thousandth of a meter. Yeah. A micron is a thousandth of a millimeter, and a nanometer is a thousandth of a micron. So it's 0.1 of a micron uh, when you get down to that size. So really tiny, very difficult to um, get your head around, but really, really small. Um, so you with me so far about uh, how the graphene quantum dots work there, the mechanism roughly. Yeah, and, and yeah. so the, the light will be bouncing off and it'll be in different colors. Yeah, oh, and the, the colors you get, um, basically, 
the, uh, the size of the piece of graphene, once it goes below 100 nanometers, um, the smaller it is, the different color of light it will emit. So the size of the piece then determines the color it emits, basically. So that's roughly what's going on. So let's go back to showing the screen again and uh -huh. bounce through. I'll show that back again. So we're now back at, this is some uh, international standards organization, ISO definitions, but basically it just says what I've told you, that um, they um, are no larger than 100 nanometers in any dimension. There aren't proper um, uh, standards in this area at the minute, because this is really cutting edge science and the standards are trying to catch, play catch up with the technology and the science. However, let's have a look and see what they look like. Um, these are some quantum dots uh, that have been dissolved in water, sort of dispersed in water. So up here you can see a little dropper, and this is um, uh, a sample jar of um, pure water. And then it's sh got ultraviolet light shining on it in all these pictures. And can you see what happens when we drop the uh, drop of liquid containing quantum dots? Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, you can see it glowing bright blue, bluey green colour in these pictures. Yeah. It, so it's... it's yeah, it's quite a powerful effect. And it seems to take up a lot more space than when we were just talking about it being so extremely small. Uh, yeah, it does actually. The, the, uh, the quantum dots are quite a powerful phenomenon and they, will, they can be te detected at very, very small levels. This just shows a concentrated droplet of quantum dots spreading out throughout the, uh, the liquid, which I thought you might like to see. Okay. So uh, that gives you an idea about um, the, uh, the luminescence effect. So. How does this relate to cannabis? Well, um, the, when cannabis is grown in America, and I think, Debbie, is it, is it legal in some places of America and not others? Yes, yeah, certain states you are allowed to have cannabis. Some of, some of the states it's for recreational and medicinal, right. some it's only for medicinal, and some states it's not at all. Right, so there's a really big problem sort of working out where you're legal and where you're illegal, but also there'll be cannabis that's grown legally and cannabis that's grown illegally as well, I would imagine. Right, exactly. Yeah, so the problem is how to tell the difference between legal cannabis and illegal cannabis. It turns out that quantum dots can come to the rescue. So you can see here in this diagram that uh, we start off with um, a cannabis leaf, um, and we can make a mixture of quantum dots of different sizes to create effectively a, a unique barcode. And if we can put that, so those quantum dots into the irrigation water used for the legal cannabis crop, we can record that barcode and effectively we can then tell the difference once we've harvested the plant, whether or not it contains the barcode and whether it's legal or not. It's quite cool, isn't it? Yes, and, and you detect this by the UV light. Like you exactly. Were talking. So you can see here, this is work done by James Tour's uh, lab at Rice University. And I think you know James Tour, don't you, Debbie? Yeah, uh, a, favorite, a favorite researcher of mine. Yeah, he's he's a great guy, yeah. Uh -huh. um, it comes up with lots of bright things. And this is, uh, you can see here that mixing different uh, size quantum dots gives us different colors or different wavelengths of light. And we can uh, mix and match the amount we add as well as the precise size. And what James Tour's lab has done, he's developed techniques for separating out the quantum dots into different sizes very precisely. So where there is no barcode for a legal plant, that's nice and clear, you shine ultraviolet light on, nothing happens. In the legal plants, you shine the light and you get this uh, barcode spectrum coming out, which there are machines that can read this, they're commercially available. Not only does it tell you it's legal or illegal, but it will, that combination, that barcode, could tell you which farm produced it, what date it was produced, uh, what the growing conditions were like, and so on. So you can store a lot of information into that. That's quite cool, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Well, yes, absolutely. Just from watering the plants, when you've got the graphene quantum dots in there. Now, I noticed on the other slide it said no heavy metals. So obviously, yes. graphene is replacing the, he the metals that were in regular quantum dots. Yeah. So it's non-toxic. Yeah, exactly. So if I stop sharing my screen for a minute. Um, so yeah, not only can we tell the difference between uh, legal cannabis and illegal cannabis, but you can also tell where it's grown, the conditions, and store lots of information. The only problem is, I think, um, because cannabis is legal in some states and not others, then that probably 
adds another layer of complexity onto the commercialization of it, I would imagine. Yeah, that's that's um, something where they're they're doing the commercialization in certain certain states, and it's it's it just makes it does make it confusing and a little bit complex. Yeah. But, so it might be that it doesn't take off commercially in cannabis for a while, but you could use this in principle in any crop you like, really. So because uh, graphene quantum dots, as far as we can work out, are uh, non-toxic. There's no evidence that shows that they're uh, poisonous to us. So they might be coming to a supermarket near you soon. In, in <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll, I'll say one thing. Is if, with this kind of technology, if they use this in the States, then it would probably be a very good um, um, something to be able to take back to the federal government if they wanted to do that, to be able to say that are you know like a checks and balances type thing for you know for graphene so that you wouldn't have i mean for cannabis so that you know you can track this stuff so yeah so i suppose we could wrap up by saying that the technology is there we're just waiting for the um uh, the lawmakers and the politicians to catch up yeah that's yeah exactly Typical of the case, technology is is a, ahead of all of us. We're even still trying to get the all the terminologies and the applications and everything else. Once you Indeed. once you discover something, so all right. So as a recap, <laughs> you've got <laughs> dot. <laughs> you can see them in electroviolet light, and all you have to do is water the plants with them. So. Yeah. You know, can I ask you a question about this? Yeah, it would be yeah. cost effective to be able to use these graphene quantum dots. Is it relatively easy to make them? Or? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, it's a hard one to answer because the quantum dot production, graphene quantum dot production, hasn't really been commercialized properly yet. So um, we don't really have a proper handle on the costs. However, my guess would be they're probably not very expensive to produce and uh, they are made from carbon after all and Jim Tours lab um, at Rice used standard uh, food manufacturing equipment field flow fractionation I think it was to separate out the uh, different sizes so the machinery is there already the chemistry is there already and um, I would imagine it'd be fairly straightforward to take them through to market and produce them so uh, once you get this thing scaled up then the costs would start tumbling to, uh, come tumbling down but obviously you know, whenever you have a brand new material, if you're only producing one of something, it's very, very expensive. But once you start producing hundreds, thousands, millions, the cost comes right now. So ultimately, this will be, um, as they say in England, cheap as chips. <laughs> and it sounds like something that could be scaled up relatively simply. Since yeah, the... it is. Yeah, yeah. Great. Great. Adrian, thank you so much. What an interesting uh, topic combination today. My and, pleasure. Uh,